In this lesson, I will show you how easy it is to add sun rays and rainbows into your paintings. In an earlier lesson, I showed you how to use the Mighty Wrap brush to create realistic cloud formations, fast and easy. Today, we will add to this piece by adding in sun rays and a rainbow on top. If you did not complete that lesson, I suggest you do so before continuing on with this lesson. I've added a darker cloud on the upper right hand side to accent the sun rays we'll be putting in. You don't need anything fancy, just a dark cloud like the one I have here. Let the painting dry overnight and then we can begin adding in our sun rays and rainbows. If you already know how to paint clouds and did not do the painting lesson, that's fine. Just paint in a cloudy sky with a dark cloud selection similar to what I have here in the upper right hand side. This is where our sun rays will be coming from. I suggest you use a drying medium or liquid if you are painting your own cloudy sky because it allows the painting to be dry the next day. We need a dry background to do this lesson. I have also included a downloadable sketch of a couple of seagulls as an option to add in our painting, just to give it a bit more life and connect with our audience. This will be the last thing we do in the painting, so don't sketch in the seagull until we completed the sky, the sun rays, and the rainbow. So if you're ready, let's begin having fun with oils and create this wonderful rainbows and sun rays painting together. Hi, I'm Danny Halbum. Welcome to my studio. Today what we're going to do is we're going to paint in some sun rays and a rainbow. Now this painting right here, um, I did this piece right here, all the clouds, in my other lesson uh, where I show painting clouds. And so that's this whole area here. The only thing that I've done to it is I've added this darker cloud up in here to give us some accent for the sun rays that we're going to be pulling down. So if you already did the lesson, um, then take the painting that you have that we did together and put the darker cloud in here about that size, almost about a third, about that size right there. And just roughly, and it doesn't have to be exactly like this shape, just something in the darker clouds. So when we pull the sun rays out, they'll come down this way here. If you, if you didn't do the lesson, uh, then just paint in anything with, with clouds in it, with a dark sky like this, and that'll be fine. The cloud formation is not important. Uh, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to do the sun rays, how to do the transparent rainbow, and we're even going to throw a seagull in just to give the whole piece uh, a nice fullness to it. So, and the seagull, by the way, I have, um, I have a sketch of the seagull. If you want to put it in, it's optional. Um, but the sketch is there, it's downloadable. Just download it onto your, onto your screen, and you can either project it on or just go by it and put the seagull in, but we're not gonna do that until after we have the sun rays in and after we have the rainbow in. So if you have this all completed, let's get going. Now what I have here is, um, this of course is the colors that I use to make the painting. And we have white, uh, this is uh, Payne's gray. Uh, the blue that I've used is ultramarine blue and I mix some white with it to make it a little bit lighter, that's the blue and then I mix some more white to make it a little bit lighter again. We're gonna use some of this in the painting as well. And then this right here is some liquid. Now liquid is a good thing to use because it's, it gives you that smoothness that we're gonna need for blending. Because this, this whole painting is about blending. And, um, and it dries quickly. So when we lay down the sun rays, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the sun rays down, blend them out, get them all set. We're gonna let the painting dry. Tomorrow we come back in, we throw in the rainbow. And we throw the rainbow in, we're gonna use liquid again, coat it, put the colors on, and blend that nice and smooth to give it that transparent look. And then once that's dry, then we can put in our seagull. So let's begin by putting down some of the liquid. Um, you can use a regular big brush if you want, something, say like this, this is like a inch and a half, just regular house painting brush, an inch and a half brush, just to lay the liquid down. Uh, and then when we use the sun rays, I'm using, uh, it's about an inch uh, brush that I'm putting on here. 
and we're just going to pull some trun rays down off of here so it doesn't matter what kind of brush i just happen to be using this one if you have one like this that'll work out great for you so let's throw in some liquid get a little bit of paint thinner on your brush so it's not dry get that off and then just grab a little bit of liquid and we're going to coat the whole thing just a nice light coat you don't need it too thick but you need to cover the whole canvas that we're doing. Make sure you get every little area there, otherwise it'll, uh, when you start putting the paint down, it'll grab that area, where with the liquid, it'll be able to just glide on top of the painting. Okay, once we've got that in, a trick that I do to make sure that it's not thicker in some areas and not in others is I'll take a little paper towel or like here I have a, a cloth and I just lightly go over it. That leaves the liquid on the surface of the painting, but it takes out any uh, big blobs of liquid we might have someplace that'll interfere. This way here gives it a nice even coat all the way around. You don't want to take too much off because you want to leave it slippery, but you just want to get it so there's no big globs on it. Okay, once we have that in, uh, take your about an inch brush, whatever brush you have, get a little bit of liquid, not much because liquid will really water it down, but just a little bit just to get it, the brush kind of damp. And then we're going to grab some white paint. We're going to start from here and we're going to go right down. The best thing that I do if you want it to look realistic um, is that you can even put like a little dot where your sun would be. Say we're going to make the sun right there. Okay, so now I got a dot there and we can take that off. Once I have a dot there, now I know that all my strokes are going from that angle out and from here, that angle out, and from here, that angle down if I was doing it. it gives me a reference point. So now let's go in here. We'll go right around that cloud and we'll pull it down. And we'll pull another one down here. Again, go with the reference point that you have there. You can even throw in just maybe one thin streak here and there if you want. Grip a little bit more paint maybe. And we're gonna come over here and now we're gonna go down with this. You don't want to get too carried away. You want to leave some blank areas, otherwise it's just a big white streak. And maybe we'll just throw in one more thin one over here. And again, each one is going from that dot. Okay. Now once we get that, clean your brush out. Get that good and damp. And now just take any brush. Again, I've got this brush here, but you could take any brush and get a little bit of paint thinner. Get a little bit of liquid because we don't want to take it off. And then just grab this off of there. So just come right off. Just until you get that off. And now we can start blending. There we go. And again, you wanted a little bit of liquid because we don't want to take all the liquid off of that area. We're going to actually blend in that area. Okay, now take your big brush. This is just a regular house painting brush. Um, this one happens to be, I think, a three inch, uh, just two inch, whatever you have. Just something that's uh, pure bristle. Don't get uh, like a latex brush because that's got a hard edge to it and it won't smooth it out as good. But working with oil paints, and this is an oil brush. So these are just regular um, natural bristles, bristles, they call them. We make sure it's, it's nice and dry and it's clean. And we're going to start blending out our sun rays. Now when we do that, 
Um, you blend it, you know, we'll probably go this way first with the streaks to get them down in, and then we'll go the other way to start taking them out. When we start taking them out, everything with this, with, with blending with this, is all about touch. You have to go real light with it, just like you're just barely touching the surface on it. And if you want to get more and more of the sun rays out, which we will want to get down here, you just put a little bit more pressure to it. So it's all about touch. We're going to go real light, and then we're going to go real light this way, and then we're going to press harder and harder to get out the edges so it's not like this. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's go and just go lightly in, this, in the same direction that our streaks are in, so they're nice and smooth that way. And if you get over the cloud, don't worry about it, that's good. We're actually going to lighten that up a little bit. So you just come in and just back and forth, go in the direction that your sun rays are in. And again, not too much, you don't want to take this, because the harder you press and the more you stay in that area, you're going to start taking out the sun rays. We don't want to do that. Okay, now we're going to go the other way and we're going to start taking some of the sun rays out. So it actually fades out to nothing, which the sun rays do it. So now we're going to go the other way. Just go lightly back and forth like this. Now as you get toward the end over here, you're going to press a little bit harder and harder. And just keep going back and forth until it has a nice feathered out look over here. And you can see how now it's starting to look like real sun rays. It just feathers out to nothing. And again, if you need more, just keep hitting it more. And the same thing with this. We're going to come back in here, hit this, and we're going to hit it harder and harder to fade that right down. Now again, if you like what you've got so far and it looks great, then don't touch it. But if there's an area that you need to blend out a little bit more, then just stay in that area longer. The more you keep going back and forth, the more you paint you're going to be taking off. Now on this one here, I have a sun ray that's coming up, and it's a little bit heavy on the white in this area than I want. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start taking that out. Now I like the other part, I just don't like that one area, that one streak that's here. So what I do is like that streak is here, is I take the edge of the brush and just get that streak rather than the whole thing because otherwise I'll be taking out the area I do like. So let's just go in here and let's start taking that out just a little bit like that. There we go, now hit it. Now you can see the difference, it just it looks a lot more natural that way. Okay, now what we're gonna do is because we have a sun back in here, is when the sun comes behind any object, even a solid object, if somebody is standing in front of the sun, some of that sunlight is actually gonna bend around them. It'll be lighter on the side where the sun is. So in the cloud formation, even more so, because it's really see-through, um, it's going to be just a little bit lighter in the area where the sun is than the rest of the darker cloud. So now take in, um, I've got about a half inch brush here. Uh, it's a chisel brush, but you can use anything. And again, just a little bit of liquid just to get it damp. You don't want it wet because otherwise it'll start taking away, but just a little bit to get it damp. Grab some more of your light. And we're going to come in, and again, just a little bit, you don't want it too thick. We're going to come in right along the edge here. Just kind of outline that. Get most of that paint off of there. And now what we're going to do, my glasses, is we're going to blend that back into the, the cloud. So we're going to take it and just keep dabbing at it until we get it blended back. Just kind of like that. Now if you've taken too much off, come back in, grab a little bit of white, and just blend that in here. And if you get, don't worry that it might be a little bit too much light, uh, you know, a lot lighter than what you wanted, because we're going to come in and we're going to blend this back just like we did with the clouds here. So, get your big brush again. And if you want, I've got a, um, this, it's a, it's a pure bristle. So it's the same bristles as this is, it's nice and soft. Um, but it's a smaller brush. 
So if you want to do that for like the details in here rather than trying to manipulate the bigger brush, um, just come in with your smaller brush, make sure it's dry. And again, it's got to be soft bristle, not a, not, nothing like this. This would not do it. It has to be a softer bristle, almost kind of like a woman's makeup that they put on there, something on that nature. And then we're just going to take it and we're just going to dab a little bit just to get some of the sharp edges off, going to feather it back. And then we just start blending this, just like we blended down here, we're going to blend this out here. And again, the more you hit it, the more you take out. So that'll be, that'll be about it for today. It's real short and sweet, um, but we've got a lot of steps to do with this. And so once this is dry, then we're gonna throw in our rainbow. And the rainbow was going to be handled pretty close to how we did the sun rays here. Um, we're going to just throw in some colors here, uh, put liquid down, throw in some colors, and blend that so it's nice and transparent on the edges as well. This is all done in layers. Um, they actually call it glazing. We're doing color glazing. Will be the rainbow will be color glazing, and this is actually just plain uh, oil paint glazing. So um, let this dry and we'll put it in our rainbow, and then we have to let that dry, and then we'll put it in our seagull. But it's gonna be a beautiful piece and you're really gonna love it. Hi, welcome back to the studio. Uh, today we have day two and we're gonna finish. We're gonna put in a rainbow in here and we're gonna put in a seagull, but the seagull will do tomorrow. Today we're just gonna put in the rainbow and we're gonna work a little bit on this cloud area here just to pop it a little bit. So if your painting should be dry, uh, if you touch it, it should be dry. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some liquid. We're gonna coat the liquid again, just like we did with the sun rays here. Uh, we had to coat the whole surface and make sure that it was nice and wet. So when we put our sun rays down and we start smoothing it, it all blends out really nice and smooth. So let's get some liquid. And you can use any kind of brush. I'm using a rather large, I don't know what this is, about an inch and a half brush. And we're just gonna, all, we, all we're gonna do is just lay down the liquid on here and then we'll start putting in the, uh, the color. So we'll grab some liquid. So applying it to your canvas. And again, try to get the whole area. Oh, we're only gonna work in, in this area really and a little bit up here, but coat the whole thing just in case we go out a little bit further. Again, try to make sure that you cover every area. If you have one little spot, they call it like a little holiday, if you have a little spot that's dry, when you start smoothing it out, it'll grab that and it won't smooth as well. So we want to get as liquid just about everywhere that we can possibly go and get it kind of relatively smooth across the whole painting. Okay, once we've got that pretty good, like I said, get a paper towel or like I have a white rag here or something and just lightly go over it just so we don't have any globs of liquid on here. You don't want to take the liquid off because we want that smooth surface, but you want to make sure that you don't have any um, concentration of liquid in one area and not in the other. It'll, it won't smooth out as well. Okay. And what I've got, if you take a look here, um, I've added a few more colors. Now this is the ultramarine blue, 
which is the sky that we did up in here. So that's the ultramarine blue. I lightened it up a little bit, and I lightened it up even a little bit more. Uh, this is Payne's Gray, and we're gonna be using that a little bit. Um, but for the rainbow, these are the colors that I'm using. And this is alizarin crimson, lemon yellow, cerulean blue, and I have um, cobalt violet here as well. And what I've done is I've taken some white and just mixed on each one so it gives it a pastel -y kind of look to it. It'll make a little prettier rainbow. If you have it real dark and you put it on here, that dark against the dark, it, it just looks harsh. So you try to make it into a pastel kind of tint. So just mix some white and with each one of these just straight up and that's what we're going to be applying onto our canvas. So now we're going to make a, a bigger rainbow than I normally do just so that you can see what it looks like. And again, I usually go in to get a little bit of paint thinner. I dab it off just to keep it damp, just so it's nice and damp, it's not dry. And then I'll grab just a little bit of this liquid. one. And now I'm gonna start off with the red, the alizarin crimson. And again, we don't need much. We need enough to coat it. Now because what we're going to do here is I'm going to have the rainbow, the, the majority of the color is going to be right here and then it's going to fade out from here and fade out over there. So my concentration of color is going to be in the center. So therefore what I do is I, again, I get a little bit of this alizarin crimson and I'll start with the rainbow here and I'll drag it out and I'll get some more and I'll start here and drag it out that way. That gives me the concentration here. And when I start dragging it out, I'll lose paint and we're going to knock that back anyhow. So it works out very well that way. So let's just take a little bit of this thing here, just make a curve coming down. See how it's starting to dry out already? That's why you start with the, your concentration point right up in here. And we'll go over this way and we'll drag that out over there. Okay. We want to grab a little bit more in there. We can and pull that down just a little bit more. Okay, now clean off your brush. Again, grab a little bit of liquid. Now we're going to go in with the yellow. And do the same thing with the yellow. We're going to come in here. Grab some of that, pull that down. Okay, just about like that. I'm making a really terrible circle here, but you're getting the point of it. Okay, we clean that out. Again, you just want it damp, you don't want it wet. And then grab a little bit of liquid. And now we're gonna go in with the cerulean blue. When we mix this, we're gonna get that green. I used to use Viridian green in here, but I found if I put that blue in here, it'll give me that green when the yellow mixes in with the blue. So we're gonna go in here. And you always want to make sure you got liquid on there so it's nice and smooth going along. Now we're going to come over here and drag this out this way. Yeah, just about like that. Okay, again, clean your brush off. Get it just damp. Get a little bit more liquid. And the final color here is our cobalt violet. Now again, we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna pull that down that way. And a little bit more. OK, 
Okay. So now we have the basic colors laid in. Now we're going to start blending it and smoothing it out. Now again, just like we had with the clouds, we wanted the concentration of light being up here. And then as we got down here, we smoothed it out harder and harder until it just faded out to nothing. We're going to do the same thing with this. This will be more or less our concentrated area and it'll fade out this way and it'll fade out that way. So just like we did with the sun rays here, what we want to do, make sure your brush is clean. Feels good and soft. And again, I'm using just a regular house painting brush. Uh, make sure it's pure bristle. Because if you use um, like the latex house painting brush, which is cheaper, but it's also not pure bristle. And it has, it's just a little bit harder. When you feel it, it doesn't feel that way, but it does when you apply it on the canvas. So when you're using these brushes, especially with oil paint, um, use the uh, pure bristle on that. It'll say pure bristle right on top of it. Or sometimes it says Chinese bristle. Same thing as pure bristle. Okay, now we're gonna go back and forth just like the rainbow is before we start knocking it back. And we just lightly go over it. And again, if you go lightly over it and it's not doing anything, you can stay in that area and blend more and more. But if you hit it too hard the first time, you've taken stuff off and then you have to reapply everything again. So we go just very lightly on it, almost like you can't feel it. You're just smoothing it out, getting it so that it's not gloppy in any area. All right, just about like that. Okay, now we're going to start knocking it back. Again, like I said, this is a really big rainbow, but I wanted to show you what's going on. You can make smaller ones, I usually do, but this will give you an idea of what's going on with the colors and how they blend and how the clouds pop through. Okay, now we're going to go and we're going to start knocking it back and start taking some of this off because it's too thick at this point. And we're just going to go the opposite direction and just start knocking it back. Again, once we get toward the end, go a little bit harder and a little bit harder till we get rid of the rainbow as it is over there. Now the red is a really hard color and I've always had to do this. Whenever you put in rainbows, everything else blends out nice and smooth, but the red just seems to want to sit there. So we're going to have to hit that red just all on its own. So don't worry about that too much. Just make sure that your edges are blended out smooth at this point. So again, we'll just go back and forth, get it to where it's looking, just like it's smoothing out really, like a rainbow would, just dissipates out into nothing. You can work this way. Now you're going to go harder and harder to get that smoothed out over in there. Okay, if you smooth it out like that, as you're looking at it, everything is looking pretty good except for the red. And it's always been a problem. I don't know why. But now we're going to take, and we're just going to use the edge of the, of the brush, just right on the edge over here. And we're just going to knock that back some, because we don't want to get rid of all the red, just this hard edge up in here. So now we're just going to take that and just start feathering that out on, onto the top part there. And again, the longer you stay in one area, the more you start blending and taking it out. So if it's not coming out, just stay in that area until you get it blended the way you want it. And again, you don't want to take too much out because the red is an important part, but you want to get it so it's smooth, not that hard edge line. And go back and forth this way a little bit with it. And there's pretty much how we make a rainbow. Like I said, this is rather large. You would probably make it thinner, but I wanted to show you how the colors actually start blending in with each other. And if you have an area like this, where it looks like it's a little hard edge, just come in with your brush and just lightly hit it so you're, you're blending those colors back and forth again. So now that's looking good. Now this looks a little harsh, so I'm gonna bring that into there 
should start popping some of that green probably. And again, I'm just using the edge of this brush. Okay, so now we have a rainbow and it might have been knocked out a little bit too much, but I was trying to show you how you blending one from the other. And again, if you make it smaller, it'll look a lot sharper. We got a big one here, so it looks like it's just uh, a color wash on here. Okay, what I'd like to do now is I want to work up in this area up in here. Uh, we have the cloud, we have the sun rays coming through. Uh, we knocked it back a little bit yesterday when we took a lighter the white on the air and we just kind of smoothed it out and make it a little bit lighter on the edge here. But I want to pop it just a little bit more because when you have sun coming through, Sometimes it will be a dark cloud like this and the sun rays are going if it's really far off in the distance. But usually when you have sun popping through a cloud like this, the clouds on the outside are gonna catch that sun rays and they're gonna turn white. So even though it's a dark cloud, the edge of, the, of those clouds are gonna be white. So I'm gonna come in here, we're gonna do a little bit of detail, a little bit of white, just to give it a little bit more drama. Now when I do this, um, I've listed all the brushes that you're supposed to have and in there is a rat brush and I don't know if any of you are familiar with the rat brush or not there's a, um, a lesson that I have it's a free lesson you can go up there and just grab it and it shows you how to make a rat brush what it is and uh, they're very easy to make uh, very cheap you just get a cheap brush and just chop it up that's really all a rat brush is like this is a big one we're not going to use this but this is a big one right here and this one, um, all it is is just a regular straight brush, you know, kind of like this in a smaller size. And I just took a razor blade and just chopped up the edges. And the reason for that is it makes it all jagged and ratty. That's why I call it a rat brush. But when you, when you have a brush like this, you don't paint with it. It's not painting like we just laid down the paint over here and we laid sun rays in here. That's actually using the paintbrush as you normally do with the paint. With the rat brush, you don't paint with it, you actually push it. And what it does is all these little bristles that are up there, you're pushing it and they jitter out on themselves. And it gives you some great um, abstract forms that you normally wouldn't get. I mean, you can sit in there and be meticulous and try to make some abstract, but this does it for you. And it's so much easier. You'll see what I'm talking about. So I have a small rat brush here. It's the same thing. Um, it's just, you know, it's all chopped up and ratted, but it's just smaller because I'm doing a small little detail in here. If I was doing, like when I did the clouds up here, I used the big one I just showed you. And that gives me all this abstract cloud formations. But we're doing in a tight little area, so I'm using a smaller rat brush. And you can make rat brushes any size you want. So we're going to come in, grab a little bit of liquid again, get our rat brush a little bit wet, and we're going to grab some of the white. Now you don't want too much paint on your on your paintbrush, you don't want to get globby here because when you're, we're going to smooth it down a little bit. Um, and when, if it's too much paint and it's globby, when you start trying to smooth it, that big glob is going to smear across and you don't want that. So always just, you want paint on there, but you don't want too much. So now we're going to go in and just start making just little jagged edges. We're going to kind of follow the, the, um, the line of the, the cloud itself. And every now and then we come out and just do little clouds like this that are probably frayed out. And it just gives a little bit of a drama. But you can see how the rat brush is working. That's all abstract forms. It's not a paint strokes. That's why those brushes are just great.
and we can come down you can even accent some of this I'm going to do that later on to the whole canvas but like in this area that we're working here if you have like a cloud like I've got this cloud that's popping up right over in here I'm going to come in and I'm just going to accent a little bit of that cloud right now we'll hit the rest of this later but right now I just want to hit that just a little bit of that just to pop it Again, see the abstract form that this right brush gives you? It's amazing. All right, that's about all I want to do on that for now. All right, do a little bit more up on top. Okay, just give it a little accent now for those sun rays coming back down. You know, let's clean up for a rat brush. Let's go in and let's get a little bit of drama in here. Rather than having it dark and right to the light, we're going to lighten up just certain areas, give it a little bit more form around that whole cloud. So come back in with your, if you still have the paint that you used on your regular canvas here, come back in with your lighter color about like this which is probably gonna be this one here for me. Might be a little too light, take a look. No, that'd be fine. Okay. So I'm grabbing the lighter blue, and I'm just going to make, again, just some little cloud formations here. Maybe grab that whole section there, a little bit here. Now we've got it pretty well blocked in. I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna start smoothing. Again, you can use your big rat brush, or like I said, if you have the small one, as long as it's a soft edge, you know, or something really, really soft. Not, nothing like, you know, something like this is really hard, and that'll just grab it and, and you'll lose a lot of detail with it. But if you have something that's really soft, like this here, like I said, you know, like a woman's makeup thing, um, you can use that and it'll work out great for this in small little areas. For big areas, like we're knocking back all this, we need the big brush to get it all done, otherwise it would be all day long with this and it, won't, it wouldn't do as nice a job. But for small areas, a smaller um, soft brush bristles is great. So now we're just going to take this and we're just going to Go, go along with your, your cloud formation. Your clouds are like this. Your strokes want to be kind of like that or the other way into a circular motion. So when you're dragging paint and it's smearing, it'll smear in the direction of the cloud and it'll look more realistic. So we're just going to grab a little bit. Again, you don't want to get too much off of here because you don't want to lose that white. But you want it to get a little smooth so it's not like a hard paint surface on there and then again here just hit hit this a little bit more like that and again see I'm going with the flow of the cloud off if you get a little bit too much brush because you want it as dry as possible and now I'm going back this way here hitting that whoops got some hairs on there coming back just to knock it off so it doesn't look like a, a hard painted surface so it'll give it more realism because clouds are very soft and we want to paint it that way Right. 
So let's see, I got a little bit more here, I think. And again, the more you stay in the area, the more you'll take out whatever paint you just lay down on top of it. Like this one area here I wasn't crazy about. I'm gonna get in there and smooth it out and smooth it out more to get rid of it. The stuff that I like, I just don't touch anymore and it'll stay right where it's at. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more off of this and this area here. And I think that'll just about do it. All right. So now the, the thing about the rainbows is what you're doing is, is this is called color glazing. And you're taking color and it's very thin layers and you're putting it on top of the canvas. And I have another lesson um, that I'll be doing up here pretty shortly and it'll be up on the, uh, the website. And it's called color glazing. And the whole thing is just one piece that we're just layering layer thin layer upon thin layer of thin layer of color and the same color and what that does see glazing is very cool because glazing when you, when you have thick paint like this is all thick paint that we have here the light hits the canvas and it bounces off of that and it gives you the color blue or red or whatever you're looking at when you're doing glazing what the light does is it goes through that color to the white canvas because it's all thin layers. It's not thick paint that just, it can't go anywhere. It'll go through those layers of, uh, of thin color, hit the white canvas, and then it bounces back to your eye. And what that gives you is a richness that you, you can't believe. I saw a painting of red roses, oh, probably 30 something years ago and it never left my mind. The color on that was such a deep red, there's no way you could paint it. There's no tube that could give you that color. It was just intense. And all it was was just thin layer of red, thin layer of red, thin layer of red, and it builds up and the light bounces back and it gives you the clarity of that color, not muted out like we have up in here. So that's virtually what we're doing here. We did add some white to it because I wanted it more of a pastel than a hard color. Uh, if this was a white background, I probably would have just used straight color and just thin layers on it. But we needed a little bit more pastel to make it a little softer color looking for a color rainbow. The other painting that I'm going to be doing, as I said, um, color glazing, uh, there won't be any whites used. It'll just be straight color and that light will just bounce right through. You'll see if you could do the lesson, it's great. Anyhow, so for this piece, uh, we're done. And that gives you an idea of how to put in a rainbow, which is real easy, and you can see some of the clouds coming through. Uh, tomorrow, what we're gonna do is pop a little bit more of those clouds so we can, you can see them a little bit more. And when we do that, we're gonna be washing in the white, kind of like you did with the sunrise. So what that'll do is it'll leave the color there. When you start putting that in, it'll look like um, the rainbow was there because when you were coming over the, like this area in here, You'll, it'll look like that the white we're putting down is actually a light yellow. So it looks like the, the real deal. Anyhow, so we're done with this. Um, let this dry. Tomorrow we're gonna throw in um, some seagulls, uh, maybe one or two, we'll see how it goes. Um, and again, that's just an additive. Uh, this is mostly the course that I wanted to show you is how easy it is to throw in sun rays and rainbows. So if you're doing a painting and you want to throw in a sun ray and rainbow, it's just very easy. Let it dry and then you just do just, just what I did. And it doesn't take, how long does it take us? I mean, it's probably the two of them together, we have maybe 30, 40 minutes and you've got a beautiful looking um, accent with the sun rays and the rainbows. So we'll see you tomorrow and we'll put in the seagull and we'll be completed with the piece. Hi, welcome back. Today is day three, and we're gonna finish this piece up by putting a seagull in here, and we'll be done with the piece. 
Uh, so far, like I said, what you're looking at here is we're looking at um, blending, uh, some color glazing that's in here. Uh, what I'm going to show you on here, I'm actually going to make a, a, a mistake purposely to show you how you can correct that once you're laying in the seagull. Um, our painting is dry. We don't need to put liquid on because we're, we're just working in one area at this point. We're not smoothing the seagull out. We're working in detail. So we don't need to put the liquid uh, on everything. We'll mix it with our paint when we actually put the seagull in. Um, but we don't need to cover the whole, the whole canvas. But what I wanted to show you, what I want to point out to you is the different stages. If you follow this all the way through and you did the other lesson that actually did these clouds in here and then uh, the sun rays and then the rainbows and all that, if you did the whole, the two lessons together, what you've seen in here is the, the difference between um, painting wet on wet and wet on dry, and they both have good purposes. Wet on wet gives you that smoothness, so when we're putting in the clouds, we put in the clouds that's all the white while the painting was still wet. That way there, when we went and we smoothed certain areas, it mixed in with the other paint and made it nice and smooth. If you try to do that uh, wet on dry, uh, you'd have a little bit of a problem with it. Um, you could do it, but you'd have to be really tedious with it. This makes it really easy. So the wet on wet makes that smooth one, blends one color into the other, so wet on wet is very good. But when you're doing something like this rainbow, there's no way that you could have put the rainbow in, well there is, but I mean, you know, uh, to do it easily. There's no way that you could put the rainbow in without picking up some of that blue that's underneath and it would tint this very green, it would make this a different color. So that's why wet on dry also has its advantages. So they both have their advantages. I'll also show you, like I said, when I do the seagull, we'll put the whole thing in. I'm gonna make a mistake, I'll pull something off of it and I'll correct it up and I'll show you. Um, that's called cutting. And when you have a wet on dry, you can cut very easily and that, that comes in extremely handy. And that'll be in another class that I have, it's called put a shine on it. Um, this way here we'll be blending um, and shining stuff up and it'll, the, the blending, because we're using the bigger brush, will actually go over the area that we want to shine, but then we come in and we cut that area so we have the smooth um, surface that was blended smoothly, but it's not blurred out over the edges. It's a nice sharp edge, and that's, a, that's for another lesson. But I'll show you a little bit of that when we do the seagull here. So on the seagull, um, I've mixed in another, another color over here. I have yellow ochre. And mostly what we're gonna use that for is for the, um, for the beak of the seagull and possibly its legs. For the most part, seagulls are pretty white. They're really a little dingy and if you wanted to wash in a little bit of that uh, yellow ochre in there to give it a little warmth against all of this blue, uh, it would pop the seagull more. Um, but for the most part, we're just gonna use the yellow ochre for the beak and for some of the feet and the rest is just going to be uh, white and some grays and a little bit of black possibly. So let's get started on this. Oh, one other thing, um, you'll, you'll notice that I have this right here. This is a mall stick. And this is great for not only keeping your hand off the painting if this whole painting was wet, so I wouldn't have fingerprints on it while I'm trying to do a detail, like when I was doing up in here. Um, but we were painting wet on dry, so it wasn't purposely. But the other good advantage for a mall stick is not only keeping your hand off the painting, but it also helps steady your hand when you're doing fine detail work. You don't have to rest on here and try to do it. It gives you a nice detail area so you can keep your hand off the painting and still do detail work. It also, because it's a straight line, if you're doing straight lines, like say uh, rigging on a ship or something, uh, if you just have it up here and you come in with your with your pen, you can just go straight down, your hand rests against here and it gives you a nice straight line. You can also do it sideways and do it up against here. Uh, mall sticks are great. Anyhow, so that's what this is, a mall stick. Um, if you have one, fine. If not, uh, I have, a, again, a tutorial on mall sticks. It tells you everything you need to know about them and how to make your own, customize your own to make it fit for what, uh, what area you want to do. So let's get going with the seagull. 
And I'm going to start off, I'm using a, uh, oh, it looks like probably a quarter inch, maybe even a little bit less um, flat brush. And the reason I'm doing the flat brush is there's some areas that we're going to be putting in a lot of white on the seagull and we'll need that flatter area, that broader area for here. But then there's other areas like where it comes up here and over here, uh, we're gonna need a fine line and then you can use that, the edge of it to make a fine thin line instead of a broader line. So right now we're gonna grab a little bit of liquid. Again, you don't want too much on it because if you put too much liquid in with your paint, it waters it down. And we wanna have this on a solid, more solid color. So just a little bit of liquid to get dampness on your brush. And we're gonna come in with some white. Let's start with the white first. Again, you don't want too much. You don't want it gloppy. You just want enough paint on there, just enough to cover it and not too gloppy that it makes a big bulge on there. And we're gonna follow this part right here. So I'm going to use, I'm using the edge of it and I'm just going right along the whole edge of the seagull, right down to the beak. Go up on the wing, and again now I'm using this, the edge of it so I'm getting a fine line up on the edge, and then when I come down here. This is going to be more the side part of it, which is a little broader. That's why these grease brushes are great flat like that. Okay. A little bit more up here. Okay, now we're starting to lay in our seagull. And we come in again, a real thin one because the edge of his wing is real thin. We're gonna follow the contour of that thing. Well, one big streak. And it's better if you can use, uh, use the edge of your brush and get one stroke out of it. It'll make it a smoother, straight stroke rather than doing little strokes like this. It gets a little jagged. If you can do one stroke, that'll be great. That gets it right in there. Now I'm going to go in, let's mix a little light gray. So grab a little white, and I have Payne's gray here. Uh, it's, it's good because Payne's gray will mix with the color, but it'll still keep your color tone. And I want a, a light gray. If I use the, like lamp black, just a little bit of black really darkens it down. Payne's gray is a little more liberal on that. So let's mix that in. A little bit more white. Just about like that, I guess. Okay. Now let's clean off our brush so we don't get too much white. Now I'll grab that gray. Again, you don't want to get too much on your brush because we don't want anything globby. If we have a globby area, once we're starting, because sometimes you can, we're going to be mixing some darker um, 
gray, almost black in with that. And if we have a whole lot of gray in that area, because it's a big, thick blob, um, it'll be really hard to mix the two of them together. Where if you have it thinner, it's easier to mix one into the other. So now let's just go in right in this area and follow that line around. Now, if you don't get it coated exactly the way that you want it the first time, uh, that's fine. Just get a good basic lay down of the painting that you're doing. And then when it's dry, you can come back in with the colors and lay it on top of it and thicken that up so you don't have a lot of uh, shadows back and forth. Right now, I just want to get the basic feel for what we're laying in here, and then we can come in with um, some darker or high or lighter colors back and forth to uh, make it look a little more realistic. Almost, I guess we're doing kind of a underpainting here at this point. Just throwing some colors in to see where we're at and where we have to go from that point. Now I'm leaving some of this area open where the feet are at because I've had them drawn in. And if I leave that open, it gives me an idea because I know they're going to be darker. So rather than coming back in and go, oh, where was that foot at? I'll just leave that open for right now. Just put the gray on the other sides of it. And that way there I know, okay, that's where the darker part goes. This here, we're, we're just going to be uh, playing with it back and forth until we get what we like. It doesn't have to be exactly like the drawing. But the feet, if you get the feet wrong, <laughs> it, it could be a mess. Okay, so that's our basic lay-in. So now what we want to do is we want to take, I'm going to take a little bit more gray because I want to get under his belly here. And we want just a little bit, and we're going to stay on it until we actually start blending that in. Because now we want to start blending it. We don't want it just globbed on. We want it to look real. So now, let's come up here just a little bit. Hit that bottom part. A little too much paint. There we go. Now let's just start blending this back in. Okay, in this area here, this has got to get blended a little bit in. Not too much, just a little bit. And then this part comes down about like that. So I'm pulling some of this gray into the white area right here. And we've got that. Oops. Let me get a gray on the back side of this wing. Now 
we're going to come in with uh, I'm using the Payne's Gray, and I like that because again, it's not good, it's not domineering. If you once you, if you get lamp black, it's a very domineering color. It's like Prussian blue. If you use Prussian blue, I mean, it just dominates. It's just very powerful when you put it down, and it's hard to move something like that. So with with uh, lamp black, it'd be the same thing. Once you put that in, it's just black. Uh, you can thin it down, but it's still going to be extremely dominating. Where Payne's Gray is a little softer. You can play with it. It works with it. It actually even allows some of the color to come through. If you're putting like a shadow over, say like a, a red carpet, put a little Payne's Gray on it. And it actually looks like a dark red where it's just, where it's really just Payne's Gray lightly over that. It's really great uh, for going like for shadows. It's excellent for that. Okay, so now I've grabbed a little bit more Payne's Gray, and I'm gonna go straight with Payne's Gray, even though it's real dark. Just putting a little bit, see how I'm, I'm taking it off the brush? I just want a little bit on my brush because it still is black, but it is more forgiving. And now I'm gonna take this, and in the darker areas where the wings are darker back in here, I'm gonna start hitting that with this. Okay, then just kind of clean your brush off. You don't want to put it in turpentine, get it all off. You just don't want paint on your brush at this point. Just a little bit. And now we're going to start blending this darker area, the Payne's Gray, into the, into the actual lighter gray. Again, move it back and forth. You can grab some of that gray and go over the Payne's gray to lighten it up a little bit in certain areas if you want. If you want to darken that down, which I probably do in the area, just come back in, grab a little bit of Payne's Gray again. Again, we don't want too much. We want it kind of dry almost, just a little bit on our brush. And come in and start making, doing, darken down even more some of these areas in here. Just keep playing with it back and forth until you get exactly what you want. Now again, we'll go back in and get a little bit more of that uh, Payne's Gray. And we're gonna darken underneath this seagull. It's a little bit dark, especially in the back over here. So we're gonna grab some of that just in the area that we want. It actually goes out to a gray, but right underneath his butt and under his belly over here, um, it's a little bit darker. So we're gonna come in and grab that. Now this darker area actually follows the leg. So again, let's grab just a little bit and you want it dry. See how dry that is on my brush? You just want a little bit on there. And now we're gonna follow where those legs were at. That so comes up here. Got one leg. And then we'll follow in with the other one. Okay, clean off a little bit on your brush so it's kind of dry. 
and now we're going to start blending in here. Now this part over here where his belly is, we want this to be kind of sharp because that's actually a form of his stomach. But when it starts getting up to the feathers, we want to blend that a little bit because it's a, a full body which is light and dark over here where this is the, at the bottom part of his stomach. So we're going to come in and we're going to leave this line but we're going to start blending from up on top. Just go back and forth just lightly to get some of that blending going on here. Again, I'm just lightly touching that, just scraping a little bit of paint, letting it move back and forth until it blends out really nice. Okay, grab a little bit more of this, and we have a dark area right underneath this wing. So let's just grab that. And that follows right along over here on top of that part. All right. Now we're gonna grab some more. And again, not much, just see how thin that is. I have it just a little bit on here. And we're gonna come in and start doing this wing. And I'm going right along the edge of the white. I don't wanna mix it in with the white because that's the sharp edge. But I wanna get it along here. And now I'm gonna start blending it into the, uh, the gray area that we have. One more, we get a little bit here, and we're gonna hit the back part of this wing. And just blend it a little bit. When I'm blending it, I'm just keeping my brush kind of dry, and I'm just lightly touching it, just like when we were lightly hitting it here, just lightly touching it, letting the paint move back and forth on the canvas until it blends up where I like it. Now once we have the basic form of what we want, um, clean your brush off. Don't put it in the paint thinner because if you do, um, it will get wet and you'll start taking paint off. We don't want to do that right now. Use your small brush and just, like I have a towel right here, you can use a paper towel. Just get it to where it feels like it's, it's kind of off. Don't clean it, but get it clean, uh, dry clean if you will. Now we're going to take this this brush with the dry cleaning without anything wet on it and we're going to hit certain areas that we want to smooth out a little bit. So like this right here, uh, I want to get that a little bit smoother so now I'm just hitting that. Okay, now there's certain areas like I smooth this area in here where it was up on his wing because it comes starts coming back down onto his body and that would be smoother but his body itself is a harder edge against the wing so I'm not hitting the hard edge just that area that I want to smooth and again his whole body right here should be pretty much white and we're going to smooth some of this gray out right alongside of it just like that and now this comes here that'll feather down into some of the the back feathers but this is a leg so I'm going to leave that fairly sharp okay and up in here if you need to work on the wing I kind of like it so I'm going to leave it alone uh, this here probably sharpen that a little bit more looks pretty good. Now let's put in his eyeball and you can use, um, I have a small brush here 
It's a little detail brush. It's a, it's a round brush. Uh, it's real small. Uh, I'm gonna put the eyeball in with that because with the flat brush, you could use the edge of it if you're really good and hit it. But I don't wanna show you that because you might not, you might make a big blob, we don't want that. So if you have a real small liner brush or um, a detail brush, um, just get a little bit of liquid because we want it to be a nice circle. And then grab a little bit of your um, uh, Payne's Gray. Just enough to make a blob on there. You don't want it too late. And that's it, we just put in a blob. Right about there. Okay, so now we have the seagull. And if you want, I'm gonna do this, even the one that the etching, um, the drawing that I gave you, it uh, doesn't have it, but I like to put it in, so I'm gonna add it. You can add it or not if you want. On his tail feathers here, um, just having it dark because it would be kind of dark, I'm gonna throw in some lighter areas, like the sun is shining through the thin uh, single feathers that are there. So I'm gonna come in with some white. And again, just like with this real thin, we don't want a thick blob because we are gonna kind of blend it back in. So we want it a little on the drier side. And now we're just going to put in some tail feathers here. Bring it up every now and then, just a little bit here, kind of like that. And over here, kind of the same thing. Let's just grab a little longer. It's kind of like that. Now, let's go in with, let's get that detail brush again. Small little detail brush. Clean off the black on it that we used to put the eyeball in. Get it fairly dry. Add a little bit of liquid. And we're gonna start putting in, uh, or coloring his beak and his legs. Now I've used, like I say, I've used some yellow ochre here. You can go a little bit more orange if you want to. Um, realistically, it would be more of this color, but if you want to put a little orange just to make it pop a little bit, that would be fine too. Um, let's see. We're gonna go in with a, eh, go with a lighter color. We can always go darker. And again, I'm not putting too much paint on it, just a little bit. Let's just put in his beak right up in here. And I'm gonna go with a little bit darker color on his feet because they're kind of like shadowed in. So I've mixed some on this color here. This is the uh, yellow okra. I mixed some white to make it a little bit lighter. And on this, what I've done is I've taken the yellow okra and I mixed a little bit of the Payne's gray just to give it that darker hue of that color. So let's take some of that Again, not much, just a little bit on your brush. And we're gonna hit the legs with that. A little bit more. Okay. And that could pretty much do it. Um, if you want to, like I said, you know, if you want to come back in and pop more of that white that's on the seagull, just let the painting dry if you want to do it easy. Otherwise, you can come back in and just keep adding more white. The problem with that is because it's not a white background in here, when you're adding white, especially if you're trying to make a really bright white, um, it takes a lot of layers because if you keep adding more and more paint onto it, um, you're just getting globs of paint. You can't make it smooth. Where if you let this dry, come back again tomorrow, it'll take you a few couple of seconds, and get your white and put it over that areas again, you will have the big globs of paint. You can smooth that out really nice and smooth, and it'll the, the white paint on top of this light white will really whiten up real quick for you. 
So it'll be a lot easier and it'll look a lot better. So, if, and the same thing with the black. If you want to come back in, a little bit of Payne's gray, washed in certain areas, will pop the blacks too. So if you want to pop that, I would wait till it's dry and then come back and hit it again. Even with the color on the, uh, the beak and, and the feet there, if you're looking at it and you're going, wow, well, you know, that's a little yellow fighting this yellow here. I'd rather have it a little bit more orange. Just wait till it's dry, come back in with a little bit of orange and wash it over the beak and the feet and that washing will be like a, like a color glaze like this. It'll pop it with a lot less effort than trying to get the exact color you want and you're getting big and blobby and you have to start all over again. Now I did say I was gonna make a mistake, so let's do this. Let's take um, an area, well let's see here, Let, let's, let's go with the wing. Say I was coming in with the wing and out of the gray part that I have here, I was putting in the gray and, or I'm blending it, and all of a sudden it just went too far for me. And I'm going, oh man, it's all messed up. Okay, that's the beauty of painting white on dry. Because now the background is dry. You're not going to mess that up. So now you just come back in, clean your brush off, and you just come back in and you cut. This is called cutting. You just grab the area right along the edge that you want. Pull it in. And then just take all this right out. Because you, your paint background is already dry. So you're not messing with any of that. If you were painting this wet on wet and you made that mistake, disaster. Now you're gonna have to either, you're gonna have to blend that background again to get it smooth. I mean, it could be a real nightmare. So wet on dry has very much advantages, as does wet on wet. Like I said, to get the smoothness of the clouds, uh, to get the smoothness of like the rainbow here, we needed a wet red and a wet th to blend all in. So you need wet on wet for certain things, and then wet on dry has its advantages as well. So that's pretty much it. If you wanted to, um, we could come back in and we could hit some of the highlights on the clouds here and there just to pop them a little bit. Actually, here, let me show you that. I did mention I was gonna do that for you yesterday, so let's do it. Uh, again, grab, our, my, I'm using my rat brush, small rat brush, a little bit of liquid. And again, make it real thin. You don't want a lot of liquid. You don't want a lot of paint thinner, just kind of damp. Okay, now we're gonna grab some white. And again, just a little bit of white. We want it uh, consistency that's not runny wet, but we want it kind of thinned out because it's gonna be like a wash. And now let's take our cloud over here. Let's just follow this line here. And again, with the wrap brush, I'm pushing it. I'm not painting it, I'm actually pushing it. So we'll come up here and we can see the underlining of our clouds up in here. So we'll hit a little bit of that. Okay. Now rather get in the big brush and I could do it with the big brush. I'm just gonna use my rat brush because this is fairly wide on here and I can get this little detail. And now that it's dry, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna barely hit it, maybe rub more to take out certain areas I don't want. And just, just popping just little bits here and there of that area. But now when you look at it, even though we laid down white, because we're, we're kind of washing it on, we have this wash of yellow back here, it's thinned down enough that from the eye, it appears that actually that's a light yellow instead of white. So when you're doing real thin um, glazings like this, it's great for color because it, it actually gives you an illusion. We didn't put down yellow, 
but it looks like a light yellow. And if we went over the red, like we did actually in here, I made it a little sharper, but if, we, if it was a, a blurry uh, white like this in here, thin, it would look like that was red. So there's, there's a lot of advantages to the um, wet on wet and wet on dry. And again, like even this, I'm touching up certain areas. I didn't like that. I don't have to worry about messing with the background here. I just come in and it's like, oh, well, there's a little too much there, so I'm taking that out. Now I just have that area. So you can play around with it, manipulate it until you get exactly what you want. So I hope you enjoyed the listen. And um, oh, one more thing before I leave. There's a, a painting I did very similar to this. Um, but I did it with a white dove. Now in this painting here that you're looking at, uh, the rainbow was done the same sort of way, um, but what I did with the dove is I wanted to make the dove a transparent dove rather than like a solid dove like we have with the seagull here. So what I did was I just hit the highlights, not the shadows. If you want something to look ghostly like or transparently like uh, you can wash it in and that'll give it some of that but don't hit the dark areas or you can hit just the dark areas and not the light areas either way if you just go with one way or the other it will give you that uh, transparent uh, ghostly kind of feel so what I did on that painting was um, I put in a dove and I just hit the highlights on it and you can still say that it looks like a dove but it looks like it's a, um, uh, a transparent kind of dove, almost spiritual in nature, which is what it was supposed to be anyway. But um, so, you know, keep that in mind when you're putting things in here. If you want something to be transparent, again, like if you wanted to have the seagull, but you wanted it transparent, um, I would make it bigger so you get some good details because you still got to see what it is. But just hit the highlights on that and not the darker areas and it will look like it's a, uh, an image projected up on the sky, kind of very spiritual in nature. So again, I hope you enjoyed the painting and hope to see you again next time.